Hi quilting friends, it's Stuart Hillard here with Clover and a great project for you, plus a load of innovative products from Clover. You know, I love a small project. It's quick to make, it uses up my scraps, and if I can make it useful as well, well, it's win-win for me. Now, I'm gonna show you a great project today, and it's for my humbug pouch. This is super useful, little fun pouch. It's just straight sewing, um, and it's a great little project for keeping things like your Clover Wonder Clips so that you've always got them on hand for when you're doing your sewing. It's an easy sew, it's quick to make, and you're going to enjoy it, I'm sure. Now, the first thing that you're going to need are some fabrics, and you want to use your favourite kind of fabrics. I love florals, and I like to mix them with some solids. So I've got those fabrics here. You're also going to need some inner form, a fusible foam, or you could use quilt batting and a medium weight stabiliser inside your humbug pouch too, just to give it some stiffness. But inner form or a fusible foam is a really great alternative. So I've got some fabrics here. Um, I need to do just a little bit of cutting. So I've got my Clover patchwork board. It's a great multifunctional tool, this, because within one board, you've got a pressing surface, you've got um, a sandpaper board for doing things like drawing um, your lines for half square triangles on. You've got this anti-slip mat so that when you're using the ironing function you can put this down on the table and it stops your board slipping and sliding around. And then you've also got a cutting mat and it's the cutting mat I want right now. So I've got my fabric right here and I've also got my rotary cutter. So the first thing that I'm going to do is straighten up the edge on my fabric. And then when you're working like this, you're much better off turning the board than trying to turn the fabric. You've just cut a beautiful straight line. You don't want to mess that up by moving it. And I'm using two and a half inch strips. Okay, so you need to cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips. This is a pieced outside for my bag. Um, so you're going to need to cut some strips of a floral in my case, and you're also gonna need some strips of a plane. And we're gonna start by sewing them together. And I'm gonna arrange them so that I've got a pattern strip and a plane strip, and also one more plane strip on the other side. I'm going to create a nine patch and I'm strip piecing it for speed. So let's grab one more strip of floral and sew that together. Now at this stage, so long as you keep your edges lined up, there's really no need to pin. We are going to trim these down, but make sure you're using a nice accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, I've got my strips all sewn together, my three strips, but I need to make sure that the back is nice and flat. And I've become a huge fan of pressing seams open. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm going back to my patchwork board, and I'm also going to use my seam roller. Now this is a fantastic tool from Clover. It's really comfortable in your hand. It has this little wheel at the front and it's just perfect for flattening seams and getting your patchwork really flat. And flat patchwork makes for a better finish, easier to quilt, much more enjoyable and successful results. So what I'm going to do on the back of my patchwork, I've got this laying down flat now, and I'm just going to use my thumb and finger just to open up the very first part of the patchwork and you can just see that right there I'm just opening that up and then if I lay it down on my patchwork board and I'm just going to roll it along that seam and what this is doing is it's pushing out the fabric really flat and I can just run along do exactly the same on this other side. So just start with your nail and just push down the very end. 
Now you can also use this same roller to press your seams to one side if you prefer to do that. And you can also use it, and I think most importantly, on fabrics that you can't or don't want to iron. So things like leather, PU, pleather, synthetics, vinyls, that kind of thing, um, it's perfect. Once I've done that, I am just going to go over the surface with my iron and again using my patchwork board. Such a fantastic tool, great if your space is limited and you don't have much room next to you when you sew. I seem to do most of my sewing on the kitchen table. So, and that is so, so flat. And the trick to that is using that seam roller and pressing your seams open. It just makes for a really, really perfect flat finish. So once you've made your first set, you need to make a second set. This time I'm going to use two of my plain and one of my floral strips. I'm piecing this, but of course, if you preferred, you could make the front and back of your humbug pouch using plain fabric, just a solid piece of fabric. And if you were doing that, you just need to cut a couple of six and a half inch squares. The patchwork board is brilliant if, like me, you're into scrappy projects and you like using up your bits and bobs. It's perfect for cutting up small pieces of fabric. Okay, that's my strip piecing done. And I'll just do a last quick roller of those seams. The other thing I love about using the patchwork roller, of course, is that I don't have to get up out of my seat and go to an ironing surface. I can do everything in situ. Okay, there we go. That's the last seam done. And then I can just flip that over and give it a quick press. One last benefit of using that roller is that you don't get those little tucks of fabric. And that's often the case when you're strip piecing, when you just go straight to an iron, you can end up with a little fold or a little tuck on the right side of your fabric, um, which can often end up springing open again. But it usually happens when you've already sewn that piece of patchwork into your work and you can't do anything about it then, apart from unpick. We really don't like doing that. Okay, so I've got my two strip sets and I can cut these down now to make my nine patch. So again, back to my patchwork board and I'm gonna trim this section down. And what I need to trim here are three two and a half inch segments or chunks. So I've got everything all cut and trimmed there nice and straight. And I'm just gonna go straight to cutting. So one, two, and a third piece. I always like to have a little bit extra on the end just for squaring up, just in case there are ever any mistakes. Do exactly the same with your second piece of fabric, your second strip set. And you might notice here as well that I'm just using the lines on my ruler just to make sure that my strip set is nice and straight. Now this is actually going to make two nine patches and that's what I need. I need two six and a half inch pieced panels, one for the front and one for the back. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna use the sandpaper surface, which although it's great for gripping fabric when you're marking it, is also really useful for when you're laying out your patchwork pieces ready to put together into a block because your fabric will stick to the sandpaper finish to the extent I can't lift it up now. <laughs> there we go. Spot on. And that will just hold that in place. It's not going to blow away. And I can take that to my sewing machine now and sew those pieces together. Now I do want some pins this time. So I'm going to grab my very, very handy Clover magnetic pin case. So this is magnetic. It means that my pins are just going to stick to it. I just love that. It's like a magic trick. 
they just all fly to the magnetic part. It's also got a handy lid and when I'm actually using them I'm going to sit that on top to create my little pin dish. It's also absolutely brilliant if you drop pins on the floor and you want to do a quick pick up, just rub the um, magnetic pin cushion over the floor and it's going to pick up all those pins much, much faster than I could ever do it manually. So I'm going to pin these together. Now I've got clover flower head pins. Um, and they are absolutely wonderful. I think when I very first started doing patchwork a college course, everybody had clover flower head pins and I think they really are the quilter's favourite. They are really fine. They have that lovely flat head and I just want to show you how I've pinned that too. Um, I've pinned in the direction of the seam that I'm going to sew and you'll also notice that because the pins are flat there isn't a horrible big kind of bump um, when I'm sewing. I'm going to take the pins out of course before I get to them but there isn't a bump that's going to get in the way when I'm sewing. So let's run this through the machine. Again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just take out my first pin. And I love the fact that I can just kind of throw that pin in the general direction of my magnetic pin cushion and the pin cushion just grabs it. I'm naturally a rather lazy and untidy person. So any tools that help me to be a little bit tidier are appreciated by everyone in my house. Okay, we'll go to the last section. Pin that together. And I'm, when I'm pinning my nine patch, I'm not trying to pin through the intersection. I know that a lot of people when they make patchwork would try and push a pin right here, right in this intersection here, but that actually can end up distorting your patchwork and spoiling your piecing. So what I prefer to do is line those pieces up and then I'll just pin around the area that I want to stick together. Okay, let's just stitch that up. And of course you can use these pins pinned in vertically as well. And that flat flower head gives you a great surface just to grab onto and pull out as you get to the pin. So I've made one. I'm gonna quickly run through my second set here as well. So I'm doing a little bit of chain piecing to save thread. No one likes filling a bobbin, least of all me. So we'll run this through as well. Okay, grand. Now I use my thread cutter on my machine a lot, but I've got a great pair of clover scissors here where I can just snip any little intersections that I need to. I've got my first nine patch. Do need to give it a quick press and again I'm going to use my seam roller for this. So just push that first part open. Pressing your seams open using the clover seam roller is also a great idea if you're making something like pinwheels or half square triangles where you tend to get a lot of fabric in one particular spot. And I know that for a lot of us, when we're making our quilts, we are in that groove of always pressing seam allowances one way or the other. But actually, pressing seams open just seems to work every time for me. And what you end up with, because you've got those seams pressed open, is something which is absolutely paper flat and that's going to create such a great result in your finished bag but also your finished quilts. So one more little section to sew on and I'm ready to move on. Great. Now my next stage once I've created those pieces of patchwork is to fix these to my fusible foam. Now I've got some squares that I've already cut out here infusible foam and these are six and a half inches square. Using my patchwork board I'm going to lay my piece of 
patchwork on top against the fusible side and then just working from the centre out I'm just going to fuse my patchwork straight onto that fusible foam. Now, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of quilting to this. It's optional, but you know, I think it looks so much better if it has some quilting. And I'm going to use some straight line quilting for this project. I'm going to use some cross hatching. I'll show you what I mean. I've got some finished ones here that I've already done. And I've cross hatched these. Really simple to do. But of course, this only looks wonderful if we've got nice straight lines so we need to mark those first. Now any line that you put onto fabric, any marking, be it pencil, chalk or ink, you have to remove at the end. Brush it away, wash it away or maybe let air do the job. My preference is to create a mark that doesn't need removing and my favourite tool for doing that is a clover hero marker. You could say it's my hero marker. I absolutely love it. It's so easy to use. It's a little bit like um, what we might call a, a bone folder, um, which you can use for paper crafting as well. And it's got a curved edge on it. And this curve edge right here feels really quite sort of um, sharp and finely turned. And you're gonna use that to mark your fabric. So simply lay a ruler, patchwork ruler is ideal for this, on top and then make sure that that ruler goes through the centre lines and then you're going to use your Hera marker and you're going to run it down the fabric back and forth and that's creating a indentation, a crease in the fabric. Now if you find that because maybe you're using um, thick foam or um, any kind of uh, soft, very soft fabric and you're not getting a decent mark, pop it on something hard and the um, rotary cutting mat is absolutely perfect for that and run that line across. You'll see it really, really well on the plain fabric. and same on here. Let's just run that straight across. And the great thing is, of course, that these lines don't need removal at the end. I can use these as a guide for my quilting and then move straight on. And also the other advantage, of course, is there's no risk of those marks ever coming back. And some disappearing inks can do that. So there we go, I've got that all marked up. I don't know if you can see those creases that the Hero Marker has created. And that gives me a really, really long lasting guide for my quilting. So let's go straight to this. You could use a walking foot for this. I think this is such a small project, it's not completely necessary. So let's just run this through and just add some quilting lines. So easy when there aren't any marks to remove. And there we go. Right, let's go on to the next stage. I'm going to grab my already quilted sections and you'll just notice here that at the moment there isn't any backing or lining fabric. I'm going to cut some of that in a second but my next step is to put a zip in. Now I've already got my zip prepared and what you want for this project is um, five inches of zip and then you want some zip ends at the end. Now I just want to show you a quick technique for creating those zip ends, which I think you're going to enjoy. I'm going to use my Clover Precision Stiletto. This is a fantastic tool to um, have in your toolbox. One end of it has a pointed end, which is brilliant for holding fabric still, maybe when you're either putting it through your sewing machine, so if you're strip piecing and you want to hold that fabric in place as you're sewing, you can do that with this end of the stiletto. 
And then the other end of the stiletto is a silicone tip, like a flat silicone tip. And you can use this and you can touch this with a hot iron um, when you're pressing and it's going to hold your work in place while you're pressing without singeing fingers, which is a win in my book. So to create those zip ends, I'm going to just grab a piece of fabric. This is one inch wide by five inches long and I need to press the edges in. So what I'm going to do is just flip the edge up and press it, but then I'm going to hold it down using my stiletto and I'm using the silicone end. And what this allows me to do now is I can actually get the tip of my iron right up against that and hold it in place to get a really, really precise press right where I want it to be. Flip this around. I'm just turning in about a generous quarter of an inch. I'm going to hold that in place using my silicone tip stiletto and just make sure that that's firmly pressed. Last of all, I'll fold the whole thing in half. Again, hold it down with your stiletto and press. Great if you like doing turned edge applique using an iron and starch as well. This absolutely wonderful for holding those little pieces of fabric in place or moving them around while you're working. And then all you're going to do to create your zip end using this is to slip this over the end of your zip, like this. And it covers the end of your zip really neatly. And then you're gonna run that through your sewing machine. So again, grab your stiletto, hold your work in place, and we'll just drop the presser foot hold your work in place and it's effectively adding an extra finger there where you perhaps wouldn't be able to get your finger and we've just sewn that in place now and that's created a nice neat end to my zip. I can snip through the fold like that and then this extra zip including this metal bit which I don't want I can just cut off. And I have a nice neat zip end and I can measure five inches out from there, place my other end and I've got my zip done. So I've already got this one prepared and I'm going to add this in to my quilted patchwork. So I have my two pieces of patchwork here. I'm going to put one down for now and I'm going to grab my lining piece of fabric. So I'm using a uh, chambray here. This is my lining and I've also got my zip. So the first thing that I need to do is to place my zip right side down and the right side of a zip is the part that's got the puller on it and I'm going to place that right side down against my patchwork. Now I need to make sure that there's an equal amount of zip end and there is extra which I'll snip off but just make sure there's an equal amount at either end. Make sure that you line the top up and then my piece of lining fabric is going to go over the top and I need to hold those edges together. Now when you're working with something quite thick, it might be thick fabric, it might be layers of a bag, it might be in this case um, fusible foam, you're going to struggle, I struggle, using pins, but I never struggle using Wonder Clips. So these are a great product and I think much beloved in the quilting and bag making and dressmaking community for a little clip that I can use to hold those edges together. So I'm going to make sure that the zip and all of the fabrics and my quilted section all remain lined up and they go on easily and they come off easily which is just as important. And then I'm just going to open up the section and I'm going to pull that zip down just out of the way just to start with. Now it's a great idea here to change your foot to a zip foot makes putting on a zip much, much easier. And I'm going to have my needle right over to the left. I've got all my layers now. And I'll take the first clip away and start to sew. So I'm going to sew down until I get near to the zip, towards the actual zip pull. So I can feel it now, it's about here. So I'm going to stop, lift my presser foot, move that fabric away, and I'm just now going to pull that zip right back up to the top. 
it's out of my way, I can carry on sewing. Again, just move those clips out of the way as you go. So, all I've got to do now is sew along, keeping my needle close to the edge of the zip. And take those clips out as I get to them. Okay, so I've done my first part of my zip. And when I open that up, I've got my zip inserted inside. And I just need now to press everything back. So I'm gonna go straight back to my patchwork board. Now here, a really useful tool is this seam presser. It's a finger presser, but rather than using your finger, Clover have produced this fantastic wedge-shaped um, seam presser. This is fantastic when you've got really thick seams that you need to press down because you can push that seam presser really firmly and it's going to press everything down flat and out of the way. And I would say it's preparation for then using an iron over the top. So I still like to use my iron, but I can use my finger presser to get everything really nice and flat. It works a treat. Once that's done and I've got everything down flat, I'll just go over the top with my iron and make sure that the lining is pushed back on the wrong side or the inside of my bag. And my patchwork is on the front and the zip's at the top. So if I flip that around, you can see lining and outside. So I'll top stitch close to my zip. And that's that zip inserted on one half of my humbug pouch. Now I need to repeat the process on the other side of the zip. So again, let's pull that zip halfway down, grab the patchwork first. And I'm gonna do the same as before. So I've got the right side of my zip and the right side of my patchwork are gonna face each other. I'm gonna use the first piece of the bag, the first side of the bag to line everything up. And I'm going to start by just clipping this in place. And again, use your Clover Wonder Clips. Clover also have a fantastic mini clip. So if you make things like little purses or even for patchwork too, for holding your layers together, um, they're super. Or if you're binding something small, I think we all love to use Clover Wonder Clips for binding, holding everything down. So I've got that in place. And now I'm just going to grab my last piece of lining. And again, what you want here is lining to lining. So here is my lining on the inside of my bag. I've already sewn that. Here's my other piece of lining and I want to put right sides together. Make sure the top edge is lined up and then I'll just transfer my clips to include that lining fabric. Easy. <laughs> Now I'm going to sew that. So make sure you know where your zip pull is before you start sewing. Take out the first wonder clip and away we go. So we'll sew just until we know we're near the zip pull. I can feel it now. Lift your presser foot, lift all that out the way and pull your zip up. Press the foot down and away you go. Okay, great, there we go. So I can repeat this process now, just as before, I'm going to use my finger presser, just to really firmly push back that seam allowance. And having that fusible foam inside does create quite a thick layer. And so using the Clover finger presser really does help to get everything flattened down, get a much, much better finish. And really, especially when you're making bags, I think, one of the things which separates homemade and handmade is the finish. It's all about how flat things are pressed, how neatly, how beautiful your top stitching is. So these wonderful products that enable us to create a finer finish are just worth their weight in gold. So we'll just do a quick bit of top stitching.
Okay, that's done. So I now have my outer bag. I've got my zip and it's fully functioning. <laughs> Check that before you move on. And then I've got my lining on the reverse side. I've still got these ends to get rid of and I'm going to use my wonderful clover scissors to do that. Clover scissors, the, the ones that I've got right here, they have micro serrations in the blades and it's really difficult to see them with the naked eye but there are tiny little serrations and what that does is when you're cutting your fabric the scissors grip those those serrations grip the fabric so you get so much more control over what you're doing so if you're cutting out things like little appliques if you're a hand piecer and you love sewing tiny hexagons or little squares together um, you're going to get a really, really precise and neat finish when you cut out using these micro serrated scissors. So they're an absolute boon. And good scissors really are essential, aren't they, for every sewer. Okay, so I've created the front and back and the lining of my humbug pouch. It's time for me to start putting this together. Now, the most important thing you can ever remember <laughs> when you're making a bag is before you sew the final thing up, if it's got a zip, open the zip. <laughs> okay, I think most of us at some point or another have made a bag and we've left the zip closed and we've sewn the bag up and then we can't get inside it to turn it through to the right side. Not a good look. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is fold my bag in half right side to right side. So just make sure that your two nine patches are facing one another and line up all your edges. Again, my wonder clips aren't far from me. I need those. Now I've been using wonder clips forever, <laughs> but I actually learned something brand new about wonder clips. And that is that along the clear side of your wonder clips, there are some little straight markings. And these straight markings actually refer to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, three eighths of a seam allowance and half an inch seam allowance. So you can actually use your wonder clips not only to hold things together, but also to measure your seam allowance. Who knew? Do that on the other side. Now I'm going to sew two seams here. I'm going to sew both sides. I'm not going to sew the bottom of my pouch at this point. So I've got those two sections clipped together. There they are. And this is the bottom of my bag and I'm leaving this open. So let's go straight to the sewing. Go back to my regular foot. I'll go back to a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'll take the first clip off. Take your time when you're sewing through thick layers and allow your sewing machine to feed the fabric through nice and evenly. And when you get right up to the top, those are mighty thick layers. You might want to just hand crank through the last few stitches. Another recommendation whenever I'm making a bag, I always use a needle size 100. Okay, so that's that side done. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. And again, just when you get to those last few stitches, I like to hand crank. But remember when I did my zip ends, I got rid of the metal zip end. So there's nothing for my needle to crunch into. Okay, side seams are done. Now at this stage, we've got raw edges at the moment, which we could zigzag over, we could overlock, but I'm going to show you a different technique for finishing those edges, which uses another favourite Clover product of mine, which is the Bias Tape Maker. Now Clover Bias Tape Makers come in all sorts of different sizes. This one, which is one of my favourites for bag making and dress making, is three quarters of an inch. It, it creates tape which is three quarters of an inch wide. And this will actually create fusible bias tape. 
So if you want to do things like Celtic knotwork or stained glass window patchwork, you can run a thin strip of fusible web through this slot right here and iron it to the back of your fusible tape as you're making it. Um, but today I'm going to make straight of grain tape for binding the edges and create what's known as a Hong Kong finish. So the first thing that I need to do is cut a little fabric. My patchwork board has never felt more useful. And I'm going to trim some fabric. Now what I've got right here, I've got some pretty floral fabric. If you're going to have binding, why not have beautiful binding? And I want my strip to be twice as wide as the bias tape maker that I'm using. So in this instance, three quarters of an inch, I need a one and a half inch strip. But there's a step I want to do before I cut my fabric, and this is a personal recommendation. I find that creating bias tape works much, much better if you starch your fabric first. I've got a little bit of spray starch here, and I'm just going to spray my fabric. Let it sit just for a few seconds, and then give that fabric a press. And what this does is, it adds a little extra body to your fabric. It makes it a little stiffer, which makes it go through the bias tape maker easier. But also, when you come to press the folds into your tape, it's also going to create crisper sides that will hold in place, even if you're in a humid environment. So summer's here. <laughs> Somewhere in the world, summer is here. And um, so if it gets a little bit steamy and sticky, folds will normally pop open. If you use steam, they won't. Let's get this cut then. So one and a half inches wide. I'll cut a little more than I need. And I'll just trim the end with my scissors. Now the other thing that I like to do is to just create a little bit of a pointed end. There we go. So this is my lead end. Now I'll go back to my pressing surface and I'm also going to need a clover flower head pin. Now first of all what you're going to do is hold your tape maker with the metal side and there's a slot in the back. You're going to hold that upright with the open end facing towards you. Now this is a curved end and we're trying to put a flat piece of fabric inside. So flat plus curved is always going to be more difficult. So what we're going to do is make our fabric curved and we're going to do that by just pinching it between your thumb and forefinger and now that profile is curved like my bias maker. So that will now push straight in so easily and you can already see the tip poking through. But if that doesn't happen for you, on a good day it will. <laughs> just use your clover pin and just stroke down that centre slot until that end appears and then pull. So you'll start to get your bias tape coming through the end of your tape maker. Now go to your pressing surface and press that nice and flat just to get you started off. Next, grab a pin and you want to pin the bias tape, the start of the bias tape, to your board, okay, just to hold it in place. Now keep in mind that the flower heads aren't heat proof, so you don't want to iron on top of those, so avoid the head of your pin, and then you're going to keep the edge of your iron up against the metal tip, hold on to this part and then gently pull back on the tape maker and keep those two edges together as you pull back. And what the clover tape maker is doing is it's pulling the raw edges of the fabric strip into the centre and then we're pressing them down. And because we've got some starch in our fabric, you can see there on my board, oops, you can see there on my board that that's created a lovely flat piece of tape with the edges pointing inwards. Now my strip is longer than the board, so I'm going to move everything along, repin, and then just carry on. 
If you need to join your fabrics before you start, do so with a diagonal seam, and then that will go through your tape maker beautifully. All right then, so I've made my tape. I always like to give it just a little quick press from the front as well. So it's all nice and even. And now I've got a piece of bias tape or straight of grain tape actually in this case, um, which I can use to bind the edges. So let me grab my bag, which is right here, my pouch. And what I need to do is bind those raw edges. So I've got my piece of tape here. And I'm just going to cut a strip to about the right length. Just a little bit extra. So I've got my piece of tape here and you can see it's about half an inch longer on both ends. And what I'm going to do is open out the tape, open out one of the folds and I'm going to put this top raw edge against the raw edge of my fabric right here at the top. And what I need to do now is sew along a quarter of an inch. You can, if you're feeling daring, actually apply the tape while you're constructing your bag, but I like sewing, so a little extra step for me is not an issue. So I'm gonna sew this tape all the way along. Now again, when you get near the top, you might want to just hand crank the last few stitches. There we go, spot on. So I've now sewn that binding. Now I like to trim my seam back a little bit. And again, my Clover micro serrated scissors are wonderful for this because they're gonna go through all of those thick layers so, so easily. And I'm just thinning down my seam allowance. I don't want all that bulk in the seam. I can just trim away a little bit of the foam as well. Make sure you do it nice and evenly. Okay, perfect. And now my tape can come over the top and then cover that raw edge. And it also means that the inside of my bag looks really pretty. Now you can hand sew that down if you want to but I'm a quilter in a hurry for some things. So I'm gonna use my clips again, my wonder clips, and I'm gonna machine sew. So that binding is now held in place and I can run this under the machine and I can top stitch that. So I'm starting at the top so I'm just going to do a few hand crank stitches to start me off. And then I can machine sew that binding in place. And just make sure all the while that you're keeping that binding nice and flat as you sew. And there you can see now that my binding is neatly sewn in place. We go and then from the other side it really just see a little line of stitching in the ditch and then I'll just snip off the ends one end is going to be hidden away in the very very top of the bag the bottom edge is going to be covered when I actually put my bag together now I'll just show you what you can do if you don't want to add a binding you can zigzag over the edge I've got my other raw edge on this side and I'm just gonna push this through with a zigzag. Just to capture that raw edge. And once you've done that, and the same with any dressmaking, if you zigzag your raw edges, you're sewing near, you're not trying to sew over the edge. And then you're going to trim back any loose threads and raw fabric back to your zigzag. 
If you try and just zigzag completely over a raw edge, you end up with a curly edge. And so you can see there, that's the zigzagged edge on one side, which still looks pretty neat. But I must admit, I am rather in love with a bound edge using the Bias Tape Maker from Clover. Okay, so we've got our two edges done. We've got one more seam to go. So what I'm going to do is I've got the bottom of my bag, which is open. I've also got my zip at the top, which is open, well remembered. And I'm going to bring those two edges together. So this is what creates that triangular humbug shape. And I'm going to put my two um, either overlocked or bound edges together at the top. So you can see I've just kind of gone from flat to 3D. Okay. So clip either side of that intersection. Don't try and put a clip right over the top. That is too big and bulky and just makes life hard for yourself. And it's not helpful to try and put a clip in the centre. There we go. So that's all starting to look like something now. Go back to my quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew this section Away we go. I'm going to keep everything nice and flat, especially in the centre intersection when you get to it. Okay, trim off any loose threads. And then at this point, this is where you're going to want to either bind that last edge or zigzag and trim it back. I'll leave it for now so I can do the sort of final reveal. So we've got our zip open here. We're gonna reach inside and we're gonna turn our bag through. So just push everything through to the front and push out your corners. You can use a pokey tool here. I find my precision stiletto very, very useful here to push out those corners. And while everything's still flat at the bottom like that, just give it a quick press. And then the same at the top of the bag too. You want to push out those corners. Now there's quite a lot of bulk in there. So take your time pushing those out. And you've got those little zip ends, which will help push that corner out finger first and then you can go in with your precision tool. So just push that corner out and you can see there at the top what a lovely nice neat finish you get. And do your zip up and there is your completed very cute little humbug pouch. All you need to do now is to decide what's going to go inside. I think my wonder clips need to go in here so that I've always got them safe and I've always got them with me whenever I want to do some sewing. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial brought to you by Stuart Hillard and Clover and I hope you'll enjoy making your little humbug pouch using Clover Notions. Thanks for joining me.